Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Becca Harkins Art. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today, I am going to be painting another split composition Dutch pour. And uh, the colors that I'm using today are, some of them are homemade colors, so I'm going to do my best to describe how I made them. On this side here is my Dutch pour navy blue, which is phthalo blue mixed with Amsterdam black, Floetrol, and water. And on this, this side, I have this custom color that I just mixed up, which still has some bubbles in it. Um, it is cerulean blue that's mi mixed with a whole lot of Amsterdam white, which is very opaque and lightened the color a lot. Also mixed with Floetrol and water. For this one, I actually ran out of Floetrol, and so I added more water than I normally would. So this is a bit of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Uh, for my colors down the center, I'm going to go with my trusty Liquitex Copper and Liquitex Gold. And I'm also going to add in a hint of this mauve color that I love to put in my Blue Dutch pores. And I'm also going to add in just a little bit of this yellow for a pop of color. So I'm going to get started here and you can enjoy the process. Here you can see that I'm adding in a few drops of the opposing color just to add some interest to the edges. Um, the main composition is going to be in the center, but I like it when the edges of the split pour has some interest in it. I just think it's a little bit more delicate and um, a little bit more balanced. I've recently begun to mix up my paints ahead of time in food, condiments, squirt bottles. Um, and I underestimated how much the paints were going to thicken up as they sat. And to be honest, these paints are a bit thicker than I would have liked them to be. Um, that light blue color is about right, but the navy blue color is very thick. I've had a little bit of trouble moving it around, and you can see that I had some trouble getting it to mix in. Um, but I'm not one to scrap a, paint, a painting too quickly. I decided to just go with it, and sometimes the thicker paints actually end up giving me more control and I like the way that they turn out. So um, that's what's going on here and that's why you saw at the beginning I had a little bit of trouble getting the colors to blend in, but um, eventually the light sky blue did blend into the navy and it actually has some really, really pretty um, blending there. I really, really like the way that turned out. So I'm happy that I, that I kept going with it. The very first color that I'm putting down here is titanium white uh, mixed with Floetrol and water. The reason that I'm putting white down first is because 
I know I'm going to be putting yellow down and I know I'm going to be putting down some of those metallics and I think it's really important especially for the yellow because it's so transparent that it sits on top of a fully opaque color so that you can see the vibrancy of it. I was nervous that if I put the yellow down and it mixed directly in with the blue that it would just kind of disappear and become really muted and I really wanted the vibrancy of the yellow. So you can see there that I put the white down first, followed it up by the yellow, and then that light dusty mauve color on top. And then I'm going to finish it off with my hot dog look with the Liquitex copper and then the Liquitex gold on top, which again looks like hot dog with a mustard layer on top. <laughs> um, so this is how I layer my paints. I do find it's really tricky if you're trying to learn how to do this to figure out how to work with the transparencies and the opaque colors and how to figure out how you need to do that. Um, but practice makes progress, so just go for it. If your paintings don't turn out how you thought they, you wanted them to, or all of a sudden your colors became really muted, take a second, step back, and learn from it. Having a failed painting is not the end of the world. In fact, some of my most favorite paintings have come from failed pours that I scraped off, used the base, uh, mixed all the mess up colors together and use that base to create just something beautiful and that's one of the most beautiful things about this process for me so you can see here just like i put the white down first i also am putting a layer of the navy blue on the light blue side and i'm putting a layer of the light blue on the navy blue side just because i really want to make sure that i have that light and dark day night contrast i'm going to blow the paints over here um, just to start creating some of that chemical reaction with the different kinds of paints. I'm going to blow from the dark side to the light side and then from the lighter side to the dark side. And then I'm going to stop talking because I really want you to be able to enjoy the process of the, of the blowout. So here we go.
I'm really struggling with that one area where the color seemed to get swallowed up by the sky blue. So I decided to just add a few dabs of color in there, blow it out with my mouth, and see what happened. So I started with the yellow. I blew it and I was like, mm, that helped, but it doesn't feel like it goes with the rest. So I added in a little bit of copper to try to bring it to try to bring it together along with a little bit of gold with the rest of the painting. Um, there's a lot of areas where there's that bright yellow, copper and gold that mix together and I wanted to get it to balance. And as I blew it out, I was like, brilliant. Those look like trumpet flowers on a trumpet vine. So I decided to add a couple of them over on the dark blue side as well in the one area, well, a couple of areas where I lost the color um, to the, I lost the color under the base color. And I just love the way it turned out. They just look like um, blossoming flowers coming off of a blooming vine. And I'm so happy that I decided to just keep going and to go for the balance that I was looking for because I am very, very happy with how this piece turned out. So I'm coming back through here with my blow dryer, just trying to even out that one section of the dark blue that just wasn't blending. I ended up just blowing it right over and just have some very, very minor blending there. The light blue section was also just a little bit harsh for my liking once I had the center blow out. So I blew that over as well. And like I said, I, I'm very, very pleased with the end result of this painting. It turned out the colors did just what I thought they were gonna do. And that's always very, very exciting when that happens. I'm going in here just with the um, opposite end of a paintbrush and pulling out some stems of the flowers. And here is a close up of the wet finished painting before it dried. Um, as you can see, there are some just beautiful areas there's this perfect balance of the flow of the blues. I love the dark blues and the light blues when they flow together. It's just oh, so tranquil. And then a perfect balance with just some really, really interesting cells popping up. Um, that area in particular, oh, those cells are just so beautiful. And then here's where I was talking about where the light blues and the dark blues flow together. And then here is how it dried. It, Acrylics almost always dry darker when they're not wet anymore. Um, so the light blue ended up drying more blue than I anticipated, but I don't hate it. I still really like it. I think it's a beautiful composition. I love the trumpet flowers and I'm really happy with how it turned out. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you for the next one. Take care.